Cleveland Browns, Houston Texans, round two. Whole lot more at stake, obviously, this time than there was Christmas Eve. Your latest Locked On Browns starts now. You are Locked On Browns. Your daily Cleveland Browns podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends, your daily delivery of all things Dog Pound, LGB, and the LOB, the Lockdown Browns podcast, brought to you by the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day, your host, Jeff Lloyd. We are joined today by the OBRs, Pete Smith. Obviously, going to get really, start to crank it up here a little bit as we get deeper into Browns, Texans, round to appreciate everybody who makes Lockdown Browns their first listen every single day. For the everyday crowd, you need to join them. And the best way to do that is subscribe to Lockdown Browns YouTube channel. The show is always available, always free, wherever you get your podcasts. Today's episode is brought to you by Jace Medical. Empower yourself when you purchase the Jace Case by providing you with a personal supply of five antibiotics that treat 50 plus infections. Get yours today at jacemedical.com. Use the code locked on to get $20 off your order. That's J A S E medical.com. As I said, the OBR is Pete Smith uh, in the house. Brown's back to business today. Although a light practice, uh, some key players still not back to practice yet. Uh, we'll monitor that obviously as the week goes, you know, the Browns practice Wednesday, Thursday, whatever they're going to do Friday morning for the jump on the plane, obviously take it out to Houston, Texas. Pete, you know, you look at this now and now, obviously we know the truth of it. You know, the Brian Browns were going to uh, went Thursday to Thursday. They're going to go Thursday to Thursday, Friday, Saturday before they play again. So a significant amount of this roster, the core of this roster, most important players of this roster, you're talking almost 15, 16 days of rest here for these guys. Some other guys, it could be longer if they do return for this game. Um, you know, it's the, the argument of rest versus rust. But, you know, if you needed any more confirmation, obviously Miami was a different scenario Sunday night for them. Um, but you, you didn't want to be in a position where you were trying to add three edge rushers three or four days before a playoff game. Yeah, look, I mean, the idea that, you know, you're worried about the Browns losing momentum and, and all that it would be – I think there was an argument maybe for that 2020 team if they were in this situation because they hadn't been there before. They didn't have guys that had sort of experienced this. But also, you weren't allowed to have the camaraderie back in 2020 that you really are now, but go ahead. True. Um but in partly because you had the bye week, week five, um, and partly because of the journey it took to get here, um, I don't worry about this team not being focused or, or any of that, that stuff. I also think, you know, listening to the team and the way they're talking, I think they know how to practice to get to a point where they are ready, that they can do what they need to do to make sure they are prepared, that um, – they were able to stay sharp in addition to getting healthier. Uh, but the benefits to me outweigh any potential risk. Um, I, you know, we don't know what the, the layoff did for Joel Batonio's knee or miles Garrett's <laughs> shoulder, but it didn't make him worse. And that's <laughs> that in itself is advantageous. You've got a number of guys who should be ready to go. I mean, today you see a lot of guys on DNPs and stuff. Uh, their walkthroughs. Um, so there's no reason to like push them to do anything. Um, obviously the big question is going to be, you know, Dustin Hopkins, probably not this week and Grant Delpit maybe this week. I, you know, which surprised me. I, I figured they'd open the window regardless uh, one, because it just allows them to practice. And then unless the rule is different in the playoffs, I don't think it is. It's three weeks. Um so that part seemed like it would make sense because then it would allow him to participate in the walkthrough and some of those other things, even if he's still resting. But other than that, like you're in good shape. And the big benefit to me on getting to play the Saturday and why I was really rooting for the Browns to get to play Saturday is one, like we just mentioned, they didn't need the rest. And two, watching that Texans Colts game, the Colts were physical. And, and you, you know, when the Browns played the Colts, the Colts were physical. 
Um, they beat up the Browns running the ball and doing those other things, big lining. Quentin, S- Quentin Nelson doing anything he can to avoid going back to New Jersey. Uh, <laughs> they, you know, they've got those big front on the defensive side of the ball. They've got, you know, the, the two big defensive tackles, uh, DeForest Buckner and, and, and the uh, nose who was suspended the way the Browns play them. Um, I think that's going to have some carryover. I, I, you know, you just played the whole season. You had to win this game for you. If you're the Texans, I, I do think you're, you're going to get a little, <laughs> little bit of that where they may still be feeling some of that come uh, come Saturday when when this game kicks off that the Browns were way fresher and I think the Texans might be at a disadvantage for the, in that regard. And that is one thing you know that I, I think I took away from that uh, Saturday night game. Obviously, Houston and Indianapolis was you know the Colts' ability to run the ball. Granted, Browns don't have a back the caliber of just Jonathan Taylor, but in the back of my mind saying, look, they're going to rest these guys. And if it look, if, you know, we know why it's sat, we know Joel sat, we know uh, Joel sat and you're giving these guys just the extra rest, you know, why it obviously the most healthy of the three, but you know why it's always got to get stinged up a little bit, Joel. And of course, Ethan, you know, had certainly had their issues. So that, you know, kind of gets my mind going that maybe the Browns can get the you know, run game going here again. You know, another thing, you know, with Cedric Tillman, you know, and obviously, you know, the can concussion protocol. It certainly wasn't a terrible time for David Bell to go out and give his best showing as a pro to this point, because, you know, it's truly, you know, all hands on deck and obviously the one and no mantra and all of this stuff, you know, that's where the rest, you know, as much as, you know, it made for a snoozer, obviously Sunday to watch this Browns team play the Bengals. That's kind of what got it going is, is, you know, look, if they were able to do this for, you know, 17 weeks, 18 weeks, you have to think just one day, one week of not playing is all of a sudden, you know, the vibe, the energy or any of that stuff basically, you know, evaporated from the building. Yeah. I mean, I, I, look, there's a part of me that understands the thought process simply because the Browns were playing at a really high level the last few weeks. But some of that is also a product of who they were playing, um, playing the Texans, missing guys, playing a Jets team. And granted, I, you know, I'm still impressed by what they were able to do against that defense, but a Jets team that was looking forward to vacation as opposed to the postseason. Um, so I, I, I get it from that standpoint. You're sitting there going, man, the offense is really clicking. I want to keep this thing going. The defense is playing really well, but I, I don't sit there and worry. And, and, if, and if the Browns lose this game, I won't sit here going, man, they should have played that week. I think this was the only choice uh, for them, and, and it was the right choice in, in the moment for what they need to do. And, and I think uh, it will pay dividends, but I, I, it's not something where I think it's – I don't think you can go back and criticize this this decision and say this was the wrong choice for for what this team was. This is one of those ones where it's like, you know, paying your mortgage, paying your insurance, as opposed to going out for a night on the time. You're not going to say, oh, well, maybe, you know, we didn't show up because, you know, we rested our guys. And seeing it, obviously, what some other teams went through, obviously, Pittsburgh had no choice, but you're going to go into this game now and you go play uh, Buffalo Bills without TJ, you know. It, to say it was good, it could have been Miles Barrett, it could have been Darius Smith, could have been any one of the integral interior offensive linemen, Amar Cooper, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Hey, you know, nobody ever said, hey, an extra hour of sleep is going to kill you. So I, I, I have a hard time believing that this is going to be anything that's going to hold this team down come Saturday in Houston. He is Pete Smith in for the ride along with your host, Jeff Lloyd. Appreciate everybody listening along. And of course, do not go anywhere. I know we come to sports to escape from some of the crazy realities of real life, but can we just talk for a minute about preparing for real life? According to the FDA, pharmacies are running out of antibiotics like amoxicillin right in the middle of the worst flu season in over a decade. It's scary. I can't imagine a more helpless feeling than if me, my daughters, we weren't able to get the medicine we needed when we're sick due to supply chain issues. Thankfully, we'll be okay because of Jace Medical. The Jace case is a pack of five different antibiotics to treat a long list of bacterial illnesses, including UTIs, respiratory infections, cyanitis, skin infections, among others. This stuff could happen to any of us. Visit jacemedical.com and complete your physician encounter. It will be reviewed by a board-certified physician, and your medications will be dispensed by a licensed pharmacy at a fraction of the regular cost. It's never been more important to be prepared than today. Go to Jace Medical. And use the offer code locked on to get $20 off your order. Pro-
Prize Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. We're the easiest, most exciting way to play DFS. It's just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you pick more than or less than on a two to six player stat projection, and you can watch the winnings roll in. If you want to play alongside some of Prize Picks' favorite players, like rapper Meek Mill and comedian Andrew Schultz, you can now find community plays under the promos tab of the app to view. Entries from some of the biggest names in the Prize Picks community each and every week. Prize Picks even offers a reboot policy so that your entries stay in play, even if one of your players gets injured. For football and basketball games, if you have a player who exits the game in the first half and does not return in the second, that player is rebooted. Prize Picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform with an injury insurance policy. I will get you your Browns prize picks lineup on your pregame show, but go to prizepicks.com slash lockdown NFL and use the code lockdown NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, go to prizepicks.com lockdown NFL and use code lockdown NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Your latest Lockdown Browns continues. Your host, Jeff Lloyd, joined by the OBRs, Pete Smith. We appreciate each and every one of you who make Lockdown Browns your first listen every single day. And, of course, make sure you check out Browns Bites. Pete and Bree dropped a fantastic episode. Make sure you uh, get your ears on that. Of course, uh, you want to be part of the everyday crowd? Very, very simple. Subscribe to Lockdown Browns YouTube channel. Show is always available. Always free wherever you get your podcasts. Now, obviously, Pete, you know we saw this offense obviously just walk into Houston and from the very first play, 53 yards, and then basically the offensive onslaught was on. Even when they had tried to shut it down and had to refire up the car, they were able to do so. But obviously, you know, the Browns didn't have any semblance of a running game that day. We're not exactly sure what exactly Amari Cooper can give in this game. You should have Elijah Moore back. David Njoku obviously should be as fresh as he's been in weeks. Is it realistic, Pete, to think that this offense is basically going to go back in there and basically just turn to the wall and basically the light switch, turn this party back on? Well, the the, the success rate is to be term, determined, but the style in which they played, I, I, they may not have a choice um, because – the fact of the matter is the Texans are going to be better. Uh, Will Anderson is on track to play this week. He missed the first time. Jonathan Greener, we don't know. That's the one to keep an eye on. Both players did not practice today, but go ahead, Pete. Yes. Uh, but uh, the thing that has not changed is the Texans still have awful safeties. And the, in that game, they lost one of their starters. They lost Jimmy Ward in that game. Yep. He's on injured reserve. So. And they don't have a Ronnie Hickman sitting out there waiting to come in and, and dominate. They're vulnerable there. Their corners, you know, Steven Nelson came up a little gimpy in the, before uh, going back in the game, but uh, th- their corners are fine. They've got guys that can compete, but those safeties were a liability in the last matchup. So the te- Texans uh, may be in really good shape to defend the run again. You, you'd like to hope the Browns can find some of the rhythm they, they did against the Jets. Um, they're – were plays in the first matchup where you could be like, if they just do this or that, or if this one player makes a block, there was, there was more there that could certainly help. But I do think you may have to see a whole lot of the passing game. You know, the, the other part of that is even though the tech, the Texans can talk themselves into, well, we're going to have all these guys back. Things will be different. If we do, you know, we play a lot of the same defense. It's really hard to, um, take away the the bruising and scarring of 265 yards from Amari Cooper. Like that isn't going to go away. I, I don't, I don't know how they can sit, literally roll out and go, yeah, we're just going to pretend that didn't happen and, and not change anything. So whether they maybe have an initial plan where they want to try to play it straight up like they did the first time. And then if Amari st- starts looking like he's going to take off, they have to switch to something that is, is something to bear bear in mind because if they do, then you know Elijah Moore or David Njoku could have uh, a bigger game than they had the first one. And Njoku played well in the first one. It's just he didn't go for two hundred and sixty-five yards. 
Well, and, and that's the thing. And, you know, and it, it not in no way disrespecting Amari Cooper anyway whatsoever. A lot of those routes could have been ran and could have been caught by Elijah Moore in that game as well. Um, but Houston, who had been a team extremely successful against the run uh, the last two weeks, obviously the Colt game the week before that, struggling against defending the run. We're going to throw week 18 out for the Browns, obviously much more successful running the ball against the New York Jets, a thing that surprised, yes, both you and I, that they ran the ball as well as they did. Um, and <laughs> You just hope you can get something out of it. I mean, the first time I think it was 1.7, 1.8 yards per carry, whatever it was. And granted, they didn't really care at that point because Joe Flacco was so white hot. You would have been a fool to actually call a running play at that point. Um, you know, with Pierre Strong, a back injury, you know, we'll see. They're doing everything they can. They got to get Kareem as bad as fresh as they can. But, you know, I'm not asking for a lot, Pete. And, and I don't need five yards per carry and stuff we were accustomed to in years past. But if you tell me you could get 20, you know, for 85, 90, just enough to maybe slow the game down a little bit, just enough to make sure your defense is rested a little bit, it'd kind of be ideal. Well, there's two aspects of that. One, in the first game, like the Browns killed them with play action because they went so hard for the run. Um, they used some some keys that really got them. Jalen Petrie got butchered. Um on, on a couple of misreads where he was super aggressive in the box and allowed guys to get behind him. The other part of that is what we saw at the end of the game. And certainly I would, I think it would be great if the Browns are up four scores again. I, like I, I hope <laughs> that happens, but to your point, they struggled to salt the clock away. And, and that has been an issue for them to be able to control the game. And you want them to be, if, if they're able to get up like they were, find some rhythm where they can just it doesn't they don't have to run all the way down the field they they don't they're not going to get you know the the Nick Chubb four minute offense where the Browns in, like in 2020 got came into the fourth quarter with a lead and the game was over he was like Mariano Rivera but you do need to at least get a couple first downs before you punt it you do need to be able to get more than like 90 seconds off the clock before you give it back to the other team and you certainly want to avoid situations where Joe Flacco has to throw three times because your running game is so bad that you feel like this is the only way to potentially move the ball. So I think on both counts, yes, the running game does continue to be a, a focus. It continues to be important. As you and I talked about, you know, I didn't think the Jets game was going to happen the way it did just because three days rest, what was going to change. I thought it was going to be the week and a half and now into the two weeks and a half where the Browns are really going to focus and get back to figuring out how to make this thing work. So they were successful and they had all this time. You'd like to hope they figure something out that can get, give them a little more consistency. No question about it. No question about it. Um, we're going to get to the defense here. And look, CJ Stroud has been an incredible rookie quarterback this year. Fantastic in his 16 games. But you don't pay big money to a defensive coordinator. <clears throat> And not expect moments like this to most likely tip in your favor. We're going to continue here. Your latest Locked On Browns. Stick around. Segment three on its way. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Around New Year's, we get obsessed with how to change ourselves. Instead of just expanding on what we're already doing right, maybe you finally organize one part of your space and you want to tackle another. Or maybe you're taking supplements every morning and now you want to actually eat breakfast too. Therapy helps you find your strength so you can ditch the extreme resolutions and make changes that will really, really stick. It's not about trying to overall improve yourself every single day. It's about improving yourself to get yourself through every day. Every day is a good day. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's done entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. You can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge if it's not working out. You can celebrate the progress you've already made. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp. H E L P dot com slash locked on. Closing it out here, your latest Lockdown Browns, your host, Jeff Lloyd, joined by the OBRs, Pete Smith. Appreciate everybody who makes Lockdown Browns their first listen every single day. 
you want to be in the everyday crowd. This is certainly the week and hopefully the weeks to come that you're finally going to get that right by subscribing to Lockdown Browns YouTube channel. The show is always available, always free, wherever you get your podcasts. Pete, rookie quarterback, first playoff game, veteran defense coordinator, won a Super Bowl, been a head coach, been a successful defensive mind everywhere he goes. As great as C.J. Stroud is, and whatever the future may be, you expect your defensive coordinator to to be able to give this kid everything and then some come Saturday. Yeah, I mean, my expectation is just going to be super aggressive with pass rush and and blitzing uh, and try to heat him up as much as possible. Not only because they want to speed up his clock, but because they don't want to get into a situation where this looks like him playing against Georgia, where he's, you know, galloping around the field and throwing the ball 60 yards effortlessly because he has all he has the time um the browns obviously built their defense with an eye, eye towards lamar jackson um cj stroud is certainly a big athletic quarterback not lamar jackson fast but he's huge and obviously has a, a huge arm as as does jackson so they're going to try to I, I expect them to use that to their advantage try to use those speed threats uh okoronkwo in his capacity as a most likely a, a designated pass rusher, uh, trying to make sure that Stroud stays in the pocket, hoping that the interior continues to generate pressure. They had a lot of success in the first game and just trying to limit how much Stroud can one uh, just operate comfortably and two extend plays where he's been just, he, he can be a, a, just a nightmare and be a special, special quarterback. And look, I mean, you know, we all kind of know what Jim's MO is. And obviously it's get after the quarterback, you know, uh, and you know, you've heard the defensive backs talk about this all season. You know, why do we look so good? Because these guys are doing their job so well, it makes us look this good. So, you know, that obviously is going to be the plan. And, <clears throat> and there is no, you know, misconstruing CJ Stroud. You go back to that first throw Saturday night to Nico Collins and you understand just, you know, what kind of specialness there is from CJ Stroud. And for me, this is pretty much the matchup of the entire game is, you know, obviously going to be Jim Schwartz and, you know, how he goes after the rookie quarterback and how the rookie quarterback responds. That will most likely be the be all end all of the outcome of this game. Pete, Mike Hall has entered the NFL draft. True. He uh, made that official. So yeah, he's in the process. If you guys, if you guys are unfamiliar and we used to talk about this a ton, obviously Uh, Mike Hall, um, you know, the high school where, you know, Pete uh, coaches at Mike Hall was obviously part of that program. Pete, this has got to be kind of like a pretty cool moment, obviously, you know, a player like this, you know, you guys all were together in, you know, taking this, monster kid with all this talent in the world, you know, helping start to put it all together. And I still remember you, you messaged me and go, man, Ohio state was there today. wasn't there. And all of a sudden the next thing, you know, Mike committed and now he's off to this path towards the NFL. You know, look, I mean, a number one, this is every kid's dream from any time you ever put the pads on from the first time you take your first hit, yada, 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 you know, 0.0000000001% actually ever get to experience it. But what is this all like? Obviously, for you guys, you know, it's a proud moment. It's a great moment. But, you know, y- y- you only get one of these kids pretty much in a lifetime when you're associated with high school football. And now you guys get to kind of experience it all together. Yeah, look, I mean, just incredibly proud of Mike and, and the journey he's taken, not just as a football player, but just as a, a man and everything he's gone, the work he's put in uh, both uh on the educational part as well as the football part i mean he's a kid who's just uh when he wants something he's very focused on it uh has has been just a a guy who's just really intelligent when it comes to football like obsessed with it in terms of learning what he wants to learn uh so yeah i mean you you try to separate yourself in terms of like the rooting aspect but you just want to see the best situation possible for him wherever that's going to work out and uh yeah i mean it's it's obviously exciting. He was with us for three years, uh, getting to see him go to Ohio State, getting that you know, getting to see him play in that you know, the first time he got on the field for them, getting to see games where like he almost single handedly destroyed Notre Dame. Uh, last year was a lot of fun, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's just it's it's a a great opportunity for him, and and hoping all the best for him, hoping that you know, like everybody else stay healthy and just get to get to showcase whatever it is you have to, to give teams the best possible 
uh, the best the best version of yourself so they can make the best evaluation that's going to hopefully lead bo- both sides, whoever gets them to success. And, you know, obviously all the best to Mike Hall. We wish you nothing but the best. And do not dare end up a Pittsburgh Steeler, a Baltimore Raven, or a Cincinnati Bengal because it always seems that the draft crushes a Pete and I. They usually end up to one of those three destinations as it is. Pete, I can't let you go without a – come on, prediction, score prediction. What's all our thought? Where are we all at? Come about seven thirty-five ish on Saturday evening. Man, this is the thing. Is like I, I, I put you on because I, I know think you're thinking about your head. I know you told me. I, I, yeah, and I, I've already been. I've said thirty-seven to three. Uh, but here's the thing: <laughs> if if the Browns just avoid killing themselves on the offensive side of the ball, like if you know Joe Flacco has been great in a lot of ways, but he has a tendency to keep both. But we don't talk about the intercept. We don't talk about that part. No, no, no. Right. If he can avoid that part of it, I just think the Browns defense is going to take control of this game. It is awfully difficult to be a first to, to play, be a quarterback and play your first playoff game ever. It's that much more difficult when you are a rookie and you are the offense and your offensive line is not great. And you got, you know, I, I think, there are things that could change this game. Not having Tank Dell is a huge loss for them. Nico Collins is tremendous. Dalton Schultz is a very talented tight end. Yes. Earl Brown, good players. But Earl I Brown's just, still out. So but go ahead. When you are your first game is against the best te- best defense in the league. I, I it, we've seen how many times this happens where a quarterback just gets overwhelmed and you hope all the best for him. Uh, but it just it just goes it, it starts ugly and then it snowballs and we'll see. I, I it would not surprise me to see CJ Stroud make a couple of big plays. You're just like, wow. But I think ultimately the Browns defense is just too much for the Houston Texans offense at this point. Uh, and I, I do think the Browns are going to win big. And obviously, you know, a prediction for me will come later in the week, but I mean, in the back of your mind, you have this thought, if the Browns get up early and get to the point where the Browns have to give zero, zero respect towards a running game, which means that secondary, and we'll see who eventually comes in to play at the safety position, but you're going to have all your corners and you'll be able to just let loose Ogbo and of course, Miles, and of course, the Darius and Alex Wright, who has just been an absolute beast over the last four weeks. It's really, really hard to figure that this is going to work in the Texans' favor. Uh, he is Pete Smith, part of the OBR, uh, along with Locked On Browns, the OBR. Make sure you guys are tuned in, dialed in all week long coverage content coming at an you know accelerated rate um that's what happens when the playoff game comes on saturday make sure you're following pete smith at underscore pete smith underscore myself your host jeff floyd obviously you guys know it's now my seventh season here with the all locked on browns um by far the wildest ride thus far and enjoying every minute of it i appreciate each and every one of you who make locked on browns your first listen every single day the everyday crowd it's simple subscribe to the locked on browns youtube channel you are in and make sure you are here every single day. The show is always available, always free, wherever you get your podcasts. This has been your daily delivery of all things Dog Pound. LGB on ELOB. Let's go Browns.